Hey everybody, Baldoric here, and today we're going to be talking about the new Grand Hero Battle Unit, Ashnard. Ashnard is a really interesting free-to-play unit. We have a red flying, which we finally broke the uh, Blue Lance Flyer curse, and he actually got a unique weapon, not just some random, like, Silver Spear or Silver Lance, whatever it is thing. But he actually gets a unique weapon. So for a Grand Hero Battle Unit, it's about time we got something a little bit like this. So, well, at least in the Flyer pool, right? All right, let's talk a little bit about Ashnard, where I do think he is good, and he is a pretty good unit, especially from our free-to-play perspective. Uh, where do I think he thrives and how to build him? First, let's talk about the weapon that's unique to him, which is uh, Gurgurant, which hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, it neutralizes effective against flying bonus, so basically built an Io shield. Uh, defense plus three on equip, which is awesome because he already has a pretty uh, high defense. And inflicts attack defense minus 5 on foes within 2 spaces during combat. So, what's interesting about uh, this ability is that it actually works really well for tanking, because obviously it's going to be doing an attack defense decrease, which means he will do more damage and they will do less damage, right? So, honestly, the weapon is pretty solid. Like, I don't want to say it's, like, amazing, but it's definitely a solid tanking weapon, and I think it works really well for him. Uh, very good for utility. Let's talk a little bit about how I think you can build him for the different modes. So, this is kind of an Aether Raid tank build. <clears throat> now, it does use a fairly standard uh, Vantage strat, and this is considering an Altina and a Naga on the team with him, so you got to factor those stats. But we are I am doing a full invest, a summoner bonus, and everything with it. Um, actually, I actually think I forgot something on my next build, but we'll talk about that. So, what's interesting about this build is that he has 51 defense right off the bat with the Naga boost, which is a fantastic stat if you're going against a very melee slash dagger heavy uh, team. So, it is going to be really good, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for tanking those kind of teams. Defense of 38 isn't fantastic, which is why I gave him Mirror Stance, so it at least goes to a 42, which is a little bit more respectable. You're going to want to make sure that he has partners that are able to buff that red stat if you want to use him as a viable tank. Now, the reason I think he works as a Vantage Sword unit, because on this particular season, you are going to be running into Thrasir, and you could do this on Light Season 2 because of um, Yune's, but you have, like, Thrasir on this season, and I think what's really good about this, he is definitely going to be able to do a solid amount of damage with that 64 attack stat, not considering any boosts... Uh, from your team itself. He's got a strong attack stat. Vantage, I think, is going to work really well on him. The attack smoke obviously helps because of the tankiness. He will be doing attack defense minus 5, plus the attack smoke is going to go off, which is going to make a really solid decrease in stats for any enemies that are around him. He's going to be able to take a lot less damage because of that. Uh, Noontime just keeps him up. Healing is really important. Uh, it's basically every time he'll get hit, every two attacks he should be getting new time or something to that effect so he's going to get healed quite a bit from that he should be able to stay up you just have to watch that res stat the res being low there is definitely going to hurt him so you got to watch uh panic towers because you're going to be buffing him as well so it's situational but he does work i think for this kind of role okay now in arena I did forget to put a uh, like a rally defense res plus or attack res plus, etc. Uh, for the support slot, but that's partially because this build, <coughs> excuse me, can also be used in other modes like Aether Raids. So just factor that in that if you are building him for Arena, the change reposition to be like obviously one of those higher scoring skills. So, Gale Force. Now this is not a unique thing that I came up with. A lot of people are seeing that this is a viable strategy for him. Because his attack stat is honestly really high, with using something like a heavy blade, you are going to get to get to Gale Force every two or three attacks, depending on who his partners are, um, or his S slot. You could just change his S slot to be um, Quick and Pulse. Now, I'm opting, I'm choosing, let's say this is a season with Legendary Hector to be his partner, you could just run something like this. Or if you have a partner that has some way of decreasing that special cooldown charge, that can work as well. But let's talk about what this could be. As long as you have a dancer with this guy, you should be able to get a pretty consistent amount of Gale Force. You should be able to go like one, two Gale Force, right? 
you just have to make sure that the either you have a quick impulse or a partner that can decrease that cooldown charge by one. So take the S slot for what it is. This is like optimal situation, you don't need the quick impulse. So we all know what quick impulse does, so if if we were swapping that, you know what that S slot would look like. But if we can do an optimal build like this, on attack, he'll get plus six from death blow, which is gonna put him at a solid um, 65 attack which is going to make Heavy Blade work on basically anyone he's going off of. If the joint attack goes off too, he's got 70. Pretty, that's like guaranteed he is getting Heavy Blade every time. Chill Defense is going to make sure that if you hit that Chill Defense target, whether it's first or last in your line of attacks, especially with the um, attack defense minus 5 with his weapon, you are going to shred everything you attack. He'll take minimal damage, if any damage at all, because of how much he's going to hit with just that one attack. But if he does get hit, with a defense of 44, a res of 36, and his weapon decreasing their attack by 5, he is definitely going to be able to survive at least one attack from the enemies. And if you set it up right, definitely more than that. So there are things you could definitely switch out on this build. Chill defense, not necessary. You could very easily change this to be something with like a flyer team, so like aerobatics. You could do something a little bit more tanky, like guard. Honestly, that kind of works. You could even make this one of the, like, the null follow-up or a lull skill. If you did, like, a lull in, in this as well, that could also work really good. Um, I just don't think it's necessary because his weapon already has it. And I think it's a good idea to have a chill just because it works really well for things like this. Um, joint hunt attack. Obviously, I'm choosing it for the scoring, and it gives him extra attack. Very easily switchable. Death blow, as we already said. Swap it with Pick and Pulse if you want the more consistent Gale Forces. If you have a way to increase the Gale Force speed, or you just want that extra attack, go for Death Blow. Okay? Heavy Blade Floor, uh, this could very easily just be Heavy Blade 3. I just chose 4 because it's max scoring. You could make this something else, but if you're looking for max score, I would recommend Heavy Blade 4. Um, and if you're, uh, unless you want to go up with like um, the Red Duel Flying in, for the A slot. That's the only other thing I could recommend for this, which you would want to change this build up. But if you want to run this build for arenas, I think it should be Heavy Blade 4 and not Red Duel 4. Okay, so that's how I would build him for this particular arena. Um, but let's talk about a budget build. So you just get him, you 5-star him. How should you build him? I think a little something like this. So if you put him on a flying team, right? So let's say you partner him with some easily obtained flyers like... Maybe a Cordelia, Rampala, or if you want to use something from the Heroic Grail pool, that works too. But what's cool about this build, with Heavy Blade and 56 attack, presuming that you are going against, or you have him in a flying team and you are going against nothing like super built for Arena, uh, you get the home flyers, hopefully from his partners, maybe a gold flyers, whatever it is, which is a nice boost. Let's say it's home flyers, you're going to go up to 62 attack just from that. Heavy Blade is definitely going to be procking with 62 attack, which means Bonfire goes off every two attacks, uh, which means with a defense stat of 41, you're getting a boost of 80% to 41, which is awesome. So you're going to be doing a lot more damage. Fury 3 is there just for that stat increase to everything, makes him a little bit more tanky, makes him do a little more damage. It's just a fantastic thing for budget for basically every hero in the game. You pretty much want it for like almost any budget build. Now, if you're not using a flying team, this could very easily be changed to something else to be a tanking. You could just use like a guard three if you want to use that. Vantage, quick repost as a B slot was also fine. His C slot could be defense smoke, attack smoke, something to that regard. You could even savage blow if you wanted to go that route, but you'd want different skills if you did savage blow. Um, I do recommend the bonfire heavy blade because I think that works really good for him, but there are definitely other things you could choose for budget as well. Uh, if you don't know how to get Flyer Formation, it's uh, Heroic Grail for Spring Loki. So it is very obtainable because you don't even have to 5-star her. You can just Heroic Grail her and get Flyer Formation 3. So all these skills are very easily obtainable um, with the regular pool of heroes. Okay? And that's going to do it. That's about it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. We're going to be putting out more videos like this. Whenever we get new units, I usually talk about them. Uh, usually just single units, not a four stack of units for like a banner. But anytime we get like a single free to play unit or something like that, I talk about it resplendent as well. Um, if you'd like to hear more updates from me, consider following my Twitter, which is in my YouTube channel. If you go to my channel. Um, that being said, though, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I uh, hope you liked it, and I hope I see you next time.